I needed it to fit, but it wouldn't fit without modifications. So I did what had to be done. Laptops are nice, they're convenient, they're portable, they work, but I wanted something unconventional. A PC that does everything a laptop can do, but does it better. My family's on the road for my son's therapy for six whole weeks. I need something that can go with me. It has to take up a light footprint, but be powerful enough for everything I need. A video editing station, a gaming station, a complete PC that can fit in my backpack. So this is my ultimate portable gaming setup. There is so much about this that I have been working towards over the last year, coming in different parts like the XG17 monitor from Asus, the Skyreach 4 Mini, and now I've been able to put it together in one complete package so that it's now here for my long trip away from home. It has been hard being away from home for so many weeks, and the kicker is we haven't been staying at the exact same place for this entire duration that we've been going. We've traveled hundreds of miles to stay in multiple Airbnbs on this entire trip, and it really, really sucks not having the rhythm and routines of daily life at home to hold on to. Which is why I created this entire system, because it gave me some sort of normalcy when it came to work, but honestly, the hardest part has been not sleeping in my own bed. The Airbnbs we've been staying in have been on the more affordable side because we're doing this for such a long duration, which means that things like the beds suck. And I really, really can't wait to get back to my own bed at home, which is why I'm excited about today's video sponsor, Helix Sleep. Today's video is brought to you by Helix Sleep. And unfortunately, the bed I'm currently sitting on is not a Helix Sleep mattress. It has been incredibly frustrating to sleep on these crappy Airbnb beds, which why won't they just invest in good mattresses for the comfort of their guests? I'll never understand. But I can tell you, I am not getting as good of sleep as I do at home on my Helix Sleep mattress. And I'm somebody who very much prioritizes my sleep as a way of making sure that I am being as effective as a person, as a business owner, and as a father as possible. And Helix Sleep has allowed me to do that, I just can't bring them with me on the road because they don't fit in my car. But in case you haven't heard of Helix Sleep before, they're a premium mattress in a box company that makes mattresses that fit your unique needs and preferences based on your body type and sleep style. Everybody's different and Helix knows that. So they made a sleep quiz that matches your unique body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. I'm personally a side sleeper who likes a medium feeling mattress, whereas my wife sleeps on her stomach, but she also prefers a medium type mattress. So that have some common ground, but because of Helix sleep quiz, we can take it together and then find the perfect mattress to match with us. When Reese and Catelyn were still here in the States, Helix sleep actually provided mattresses for them as well. And they think it's the best sleep that they got in their entire life. And they're regretting not having it in South Africa, which, you know, we're all now not having good sleep. And the best part of all of this is that Helix delivers your mattress right to your door for free. It comes rolled up in a box and it's super easy to set up yourself. And if you're nervous to buy a mattress that you've never tried before, don't worry about it. Helix has a 100 night sleep trial so you can get more than three months to make sure that you love it. And if you don't love it, they'll pick it up for you and give you a full refund. There's little risk involved here. I love my Helix sleep mattress. I think you'll enjoy it too. So why don't you go to helixsleep.com com forward slash UFD tech and you can get up to $200 off plus two free pillows and then you also have that return policy. This is just a great offer for something that you spend a third of your life doing. Invest in your sleep my friends helixsleep.com forward slash UFD tech. So the focus point of this entire setup is the Skyreach 4 mini case, which I actually have already done a build in previously where I used a capture card instead of a GPU, but now I needed something that was gonna be a bit more robust for my travels. I couldn't continue to use the Ryzen APU that I had in this system because I needed dedicated GPU acceleration for any of the video editing that I was doing on the go. But I wanted to keep the five liter case so that it could still fit in my backpack and make it easy to travel. For my family of five to go all all over the state of Florida, we have to bring the entire house. We fill both our minivan and our other car completely to the brim in order to bring everything, especially with our special needs child. He needs a million accessories. So keeping the footprint of my entire 
office needs down is highly important here. Skyreach 4 Mini allows me to accomplish that, but it also has the sky slots on the outside of the chassis, which allows me to add accessories, which is where I got so excited when Asus announced the XG17 because it has a camera thread mount, which I knew as soon as I saw it, I was going to make it so that it worked like this because I use that to put it on a quick release plate, to then put it on a tripod, which is then mounted to another quick release plate that's threaded through the sky slots on the system. It doesn't affect thermals, but it allows me to get extra footprint on my desk so that I don't have to have the monitor taking up horizontal space, but rather have it take up vertical space. And then because it's on a tripod ball head, I can either have it landscape or I can have it portrait, but also taking up the vertical space, it then means that I, if I want to have dual monitors in a tiny setup, like I'm on a plastic table that I brought from home, I can put another monitor in front of it or to the side without actually taking up any of its field of view. So I've had this in my mind ever since I got my Skyreach 4 Mini. This was gonna be the ultimate portable setup. This monitor is 1080p, 240 hertz, the best of the best when it comes to portable gaming monitors. So that means that I need to have the best of the best components in the system that I could, but we are only dealing with five liters of space, which is less than a PlayStation 4. It is a small amount of volume to fit everything that you could possibly need. But again, trying to take up as little packing space as possible, I had a few things that I needed to do as well, such as make it brickless, which means unlike a laptop, which has a power brick associated with it, it needs to be powered internally so that I only need to put a power plug into it as opposed to having something hanging off to the side, which means that I needed to use the setup for the HD Plex 400 watt power supply to go on the inside. And trying to include a power supply in a five liter case is just difficult. It is very hard to get everything to fit. So I got the best components that I thought that could be adequately cooled in the system and that I could also get my hands on. Optimum Tech's already done a great video where he put roughly the same components that I did, but with a 3060 Ti in this system, you should check out his video right up there, but I could only get my hands on an RTX 3060, so it's slightly worse than his, but I think my overall setup is slightly more portable, unique, different. So I have a Ryzen 5 5600X in here, cooled by the Noctua NH-L9A. We have that RTX 3060, which Palette sent over, which when I first looked at it, thought it should fit, then realized that the casing for the fan was too thick. So I had to take that off and keep just the heat pipes and the heat sinks, but I realized that that was too tall and interfering with the power supply, which led to me having to sand things down, drill a hole into the casing of the power supply, making sure that metal shavings didn't get into any of this to short anything out and then still kind of shove it in there and make sure that it fit. Other graphics cards fit better, but I can't get another GPU in this economy, so I dealt with what I had. In order to cool the GPU, since it no longer has its own fan, I had to pick up one of these external fans, the Noctua NF-A914, which is the slim fans. These are thin enough that I can actually put them on the heatsink of the GPU and still get the case to close in over it, but still well performing enough that the GPU temperatures actually weren't too bad, which we'll get to specs and benchmarks in just a second. Rounding out the rest of the system, we got 64 gigs of DDR4 3600 megahertz Corsair Vengeance LPX memory, which is great for video editing, and I absolutely need it. As soon as you apply any sort of effect in Premiere Pro, it does stuff like this. Um, nom, 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 nom. And so making sure that I had 64 gigs on my ASRock B550 was hugely important. I've already mentioned the case as well as the portable monitor. And then we also have the peripheral setup. I'm using the Logitech G903 wireless mouse because it's a great wireless mouse. It's actually pretty top class. I do keep it wired because I have enough space to do that. But if I didn't, the wireless isn't option. And then for my keyboard, I have the iQuinix F96, which is in this coral C color, which I absolutely love. This can be wired or wireless as well. But I am personally a fan of 96% keyboards because I still use my 10 key nearly every single day. So having that, but keeping the size down was again, tremendously important to me. So everything here is meant to be portable and on the go and having everything on quick release plates means that I can disconnect and pack up whenever we're ready to move to the next Airbnb location for my son's therapy. Or additionally, it can create other opportunities for me to have multiple versions of these where I can stack a couple of them on quick release tripods that are next to it or set up. The only reason I'm not doing that 
is because this thing costs $500 and Asus still hasn't released the 15 inch version, which I believe is supposed to be 144 Hertz. I'm waiting for that in order to do more of a regular dual monitor setup, but I'm not gonna spend another $500 just to get another 17 inch portable monitor. Having 240 Hertz on the go is great though, because then that means the games that I'm playing, I get to see in the best light possible, which is a stark difference than a lot of the laptops you can get out there. They do have 240 Hertz and 300 Hertz laptops, but again, try to buy those right now. They are not in stock. Getting an RTX 3060 laptop, simply not possible. The only thing I could compare it to was this RTX 2070 laptop, that I have on hand and just comparing the benchmarks of this versus the benchmarks of that it actually does a lot better. I've been personally enjoying a lot of Frostpunk lately while we've been on this trip so I benchmarked that and I got 111 FPS on my portable PC, whereas the gaming laptop only managed 93.7. Then testing out video editing, this has 64 gigs of RAM. This laptop's an i7 with six cores, 12 threads. So actually roughly equivalent specs, only 32 gigs of RAM, typically doesn't matter for the video edits. I was able to render out a test video in one minute and 24 seconds with this PC, and then one minute and 44 seconds with the laptop. So this PC is faster than the fastest laptop that I personally had on hand, and I can't get my hands on an RTX 36 series laptop at this point. So I'd like to be unique and just have the fastest version of both worlds. Now here comes the question of noise and thermals. And the truth is, as long as you keep it on the silent mode fan profile, it's not too bad. The PC obviously very clearly on during the duration of me filming this, and it's not really getting above ambient room noise. However, if you put it on performance mode, it becomes noticeably audible. However, it's not as bad as a gaming laptop, which gets really high pitched and starts whining after a bit. This is more more like a low droning noise. But the truth is it actually doesn't sound as bad as the washer that's currently in the room that I'm working in. So honestly, it just fades into the background as the sweet sounds of the washing machine takes me away. My ultimate portable gaming setup has done everything that I needed to do. I use it for work every single day. I'm able to edit videos on it when I wanna chill with some Frostpunk or even play Cyberpunk on this PC. I can absolutely do that. And it's not as typical as a laptop and I can have more flexibility with it if I want to. Again, Optimum Tech has done a video where he was able to put a 5950X with one of the Noctua coolers. You kinda have to undervolt and make it so that it stays within certain barriers, but there's upgradability that even goes into this five liter chassis that I just chose not to use for my use case because I couldn't get my hands on the parts that I needed in order to make it the best all around. I just good enough. But I have all of the USB ports on the back that I could possibly want. The graphics card has four display outputs, which is great and it fits in my luggage. I don't have to carry around a full ATX setup. I don't have to worry about the loudness or lack of power that comes with a laptop. I get everything that I could possibly want. And once Asus launches their 15 inch version of this portable monitor, I can have a dual monitor setup that utilizes more of the quick release plate system, which I am a huge fan of. And I'm so glad that they include this. And portable monitor companies, if you're out there, start including a camera thread mount on your monitor, it is just amazing. The cons, I mean, the drawbacks of a system like this are obviously notable. Noise is gonna be a huge issue no matter how you're trying to do it because of the smaller fans you have to use, you have to ramp them up to a higher RPM to get the same cooling that you would otherwise want. And also you can't get as much performance as you wanna pack. I can't expand with PCI Express cards. I can do something like a USB capture card if I so wanted it in order to stream. So there is some flexibility there. It's not like you lose out completely by going with a five liter setup like this, but this would also make it very easy for me to do some international traveling like to Computex or elsewhere if that ever opens up again, or if I go back to South Africa. Noise and thermal is probably the biggest downfall. Getting stuff to fit was incredibly hard, but it's here, it works, and I am in love with this setup. So let me know what you think of my ultimate portable gaming setup down below in the comments. And if you wanna check out the review that we did on the Asus ROG XG17, because it has a lot of features that I couldn't quite get to here, such as its 7,800 milliamp hour battery, as well as its speakers, you can check out the video right over there where I go a bit more in depth on that. Thanks so much for watching, friends, and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.